How did one of the biggest rappers of the 2000s end up as a co-author of an iconic book that still influences the industry and the world to this day? While it might sound like an odd crossover, hip-hop has a fair share of important literary works to draw inspiration from. Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power is one of those books that helped an entire generation of artists find confidence in how to start their own way to success. Interestingly, 50 Cent was a big fan of this book and even credited Robert Greene as his mentor at some stage of life. For fans of 50, such a collab wouldn't be that surprising. 50 Cent has always been praised by many for his mental toughness, business acumen, and regardless of how difficult a situation 50 had to endure, and of course, for his masterful way of handling beefs with other rappers, powerful gangsters, and even entire labels. That's why it's not that shocking to know that 50 Cent has a lot of admiration for the book and even follows some of Green's laws himself. People always saw 50 as a person in power, even when the odds were seemingly against him. It all started with the release of Robert Green's iconic 48 Laws of Power book that we mentioned before. 50 has always been into reading, despite his tough gangster persona. 50 picked up the book somewhere in the early 2000s when he was in his prime. After dealing with the rough surroundings of Jamaica, Queens, where 50 had to constantly fight someone or something for long years, the book felt like a breath of fresh air for 50 Cent. Even more so, it resonated with him. As 50 himself said, he related to it immediately. Things Robert Greene was talking about in his book were so true to 50 Cent's life that it even became a Bible kind of book for him. You know how, no matter how you're feeling, you can go find a passage in the Bible that feels like it was written for that moment? It was like that with Greene's book. In short, 50 Cent was fascinated by Greene's work, as the street life 50 lived was all about power, respect, and how to gain and maintain it properly. Interestingly, 50's gangster side of life wasn't the only one that resonated with the book. In Robert Greene's words, the music industry is one of the most competitive and power-hungry realms of media. Shark industries by their sharkiness. So Hollywood would rate very high up on the shark scale, and politics would rate somewhere pretty oh, yeah. high as well, and sports. Very, the music industry is like up here. It's wow. the sharkiest, most Machiavellian environment you can find. And you know, I, I later did a book with Fifty Cent, and he right. explained to me that. You know, he'd obviously seen and suffered everything on the streets in Southside Queens where he grew up. You know, he was a crack dealer and mm -hmm. there's all kinds of violence he was shot. He said nothing prepared him for the power games in the music industry. So for him, the book was like a template that he could use that could help him navigate that kind of environment. And it was a, a book that was very honest and straightforward. I, I compare it to getting your shot of whiskey straight up. There's yeah. no water, there's no dilution. It's a straight head oh, yeah. shot, right? Oh, yeah. And so I think hip hop artists appreciate that. And, you know, I, I've since become friends. I'm not name dropping, but with other rappers <laughs> like Drake, Drake. And they've all explained the same thing, you know. This, this business I'm in, it's just so intense, it's so manipulative. And, you know, they, my books would help them a lot. So it made perfect sense for a rapper like 50 Cent to be incredibly invested in a book like 48 Laws of Power. It was simply written about the life 50 lived. Those exact things made other influential rappers like Jay-Z, Ye, and Busta Rhymes treat 48 Laws as a legitimate benchmark when it came to building a successful career in business. According to Robert Greene himself, attracting aspiring rap artists was never a conscious strategy of his. Still, in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense to him why 48 Laws resonated with so many people in the business. The timing of 48 Laws of Power's release was simply perfect. When the book came out, there was this whole shift where rappers were trying to become entrepreneurs. Some of these prefigure with people like Tupac, where there was some tension about who really owned the music. Managers like Chris Lighty heard about the book and found it extremely helpful in carving out their independence in the music world, because traditionally, black artists are the most exploited. Green especially highlighted 50's case. As 50 Cent had to deal with issues of this kind when he was first signed to Interscope, 50 told me personally that he found the book very helpful for dealing with that shark infested world. He was the one who reached out to meet me and I think he was curious to see who I was and if something could be done between us. It was kind of funny because neither of us was what the other person expected. Interestingly, Green couldn't really figure out the reason behind 50's interest in linking up. Robert Green initially thought that 50 Cent needed his help with the ongoing game beef that was at its peak back then. But other than that, he had no idea what to expect. The two eventually linked up in 2006 in the back room of a steakhouse in Manhattan. 
According to Robert Greene, Fifty had an entourage of about 10 people, while Greene was just solo. Even though the circumstances might seem a bit intimidating on paper, everything changes with the fact that 50 Cent actually brought his kid, and 50's team mostly consisted of managers and agents who could help in case the two wanted to make a business deal eventually. Both 50 and Green had this to say about meeting each other for the first time. He was absolutely not who I thought he'd be. Robert Green was pleasantly surprised to see 50 Cent being very open and not intimidating at all, while 50 Cent recognized a very powerful and intellectually sharp person in Robert Green. Green recalls his first meeting with 50 Cent as comfortable, which is not surprising given both men's common interest in strategy and power games. The two spent a couple of hours talking about basically everything, and after some time, tossed around the idea of working on a book together. According to Green, their collaboration grew from there. Advice very helpful, so 50 he contacted me, and we thought it'd be really interesting to do a book together because we come from such different backgrounds, but we have a sort of a similar way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So this is the monster that we created together. 50 Cent spent a lot of time with Robert Green from that point on. 50 invited Green to see his house in Connecticut, which funnily enough, Green called a strange place. The two spent some time in Manhattan and went to the VMAs together in Vegas. We went to a party in Vegas at Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s mother's house out in the middle of the desert. I was the only white guy in four Escalades that were headed out to the desert. It was a pretty wild party. There was a lot of pot, and everyone was dancing. Here was 50 Cent, sitting in the corner on a sofa, watching a sporting event. He's not a party person at all. He's very serious. Basically, 50 showed Robert Greene his private and business life to build trust and set the tone for their upcoming collaboration. Robert Greene recalls those times fondly, saying that he thinks 50 is a really great person. Greene also wanted to show his admiration for 50 taking a deep dive into 50's catalog. Among the songs that resonated with him the most, Greene highlighted the track Position of Power, My Toy Soldier, and Hustler's Ambition. Robert Greene also admitted to listening to 50's unreleased Power of the Dollar album, describing the material he heard from the project as hard stuff. Especially, Green liked the track where 50 went at Ja Rule, full steam ahead. The track is believed to be back down, but it could also be Your Life's on the Line, which was a Ja Rule diss as well. According to Green, 50 played some of his most recent unreleased mixtapes back when they were traveling together, so Robert Green might have been one of the few people to listen to some exclusive 50 stuff. And of course, being a writing enthusiast, Robert Green couldn't miss 50 Cent's book From Pieces to Wait. Interestingly, Green found Fitt's book great and very inspiring. After spending some time with 50 Cent, Robert Green noticed one very curious thing about him. Green said that prior to meeting 50 for the first time, he expected to see the intimidating gangster, although he turned out to be nice, charming, and not all ego-ridden. Robert Green thinks that 50 Cent is fully aware of his tough presence and actually uses it to his advantage, putting fear and respect in his enemies while completely disarming his partners to be with his calmness cleverness, and willingness to learn from anyone and anything. Also, Green mentioned that he and 50 talked briefly about his beef with the game, which was very intense at that period of time. While Robert Green wasn't fully aware of the situation, how it started, who wronged who, Green did give 50 Cent his opinion on the beef and what kind of strategy 50 should stick to. Green praised 50's way of thinking when approaching a situation like this, noting that 50 Cent was looking for a smart way to end the game problem without turning it into a full-blown, mutually destructive war. While eventually many hip-hop fans believed that game came out on top of this beef after his 300 bars G-Unit diss track, things weren't that simple since. Yes, game went on a hot album streak, but 1. 50 Cent allegedly got his share from all the profits game made during that period of time. 2. The beef never turned into a dogfight like his never-ending fallout with Ja Rule, where 50, done being stabbed, shot at, and almost blackballed from the industry. 50 is still relevant to this day, even if we have to take 50's ventures beyond music into account. 50 is more of a businessman these days than an artist, and in a way, 50 made the best of that decade-long saga. As Robert Greene recalled 50 Cent's approach to the beef, for him, 50 seemed much more strategic, contrary to his ultra-aggressive stage persona. Given all the good things the two had to say about each other, it wouldn't be shocking to know that Green and 50 made a great team. Their collaborative book, 50th Law, was released in 2009 and turned out to be a really solid project that was highly acclaimed by critics and readers. Robert Green drew a lot of inspiration from his time spent with 50, which they basically lived together for half a year. Also, you can occasionally spot some ideas from 50's From Pieces to Wait book in 50th Law. As The Guardian's Oliver Berkerman described the book, 50th Law acts as a manual on power similar to the works of Machiavelli or Sun Tzu. 
only with more anecdotes drawn from the crack trade. The book consists of 10 chapters where, in Green's own words, each represents dealing with a different form of fear, and each chapter begins with an anecdote from 50 Cent's life that kind of illustrates the story. There are also a lot of historical examples used in the book, including the life paths of legendary figures like Malcolm X, Sun Tzu, Machiavelli, Richard Wright, and many more. Basically, 50th Law explores the phenomenon of fearlessness, where it comes from, and how it can help in one's day-to-day -day life. 50 Cent plays his part in this book as a person who has to resort to using his fearlessness or courage, or at least convincing illusion of such, to deal with recurring problems that happen way too often when you're that deep into the underworld of Queens, Jamaica area. An odd couple of 50 and Robert Greene made for a very interesting dynamic, and both critics and readers praised the book for being an easy to comprehend, compelling, and overall insightful read. 50th Law also helped hip-hop fans learn some more crazy stories from 50's life and get to know Green's opinion on power dynamics in the modern world without leaving their comfort zone and going too deep into history. Simply put, it was a win-win for everyone involved. 50 and Robert Green still mention each other in the best way possible and recall the time spent together occasionally. 50 often references Robert Green's impact on his life in different public appearances. Gave me the, the best advice was Robert. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Robert Greene, he wrote The 48 Laws of Power. Um, to me, well, you know, everyone is not, everyone is not actually going to be prepared to, to take the time to actually utilize the information that's given to them. Like, if you pay attention and you actually keep whatever information is coming in front of you, that you choose what's valuable. But the things that you do here that are valuable, if you make it your business to keep it, even if you have to write it down, so you have to say it to yourself or whatever, and you just keep, the person says something and you go, what What did you just say? Hold on a second, put it in my phone. And hold on to it until it becomes a part of you in the way you actually would express yourself at different points. And you can often see 50 quoting some of the laws of power from Green's iconic book. And that's just being conscious of yourself. <laughs> because, I mean, you know the laws of power, you never outshine the master. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I even... Set, had a conversation and said it to Drake. Mm -hmm. I said, don't ever go over or be past Wayne in conversation, because it'll hurt you. Robert Greene also isn't shying away from accepting the fact that 50 also helped to expand his vision of life, and there are multiple things that Greene learned from 50 Cent. And so what I learned from him and being around him is, I always thought that I was a pretty fearless person, you know? When I was young, I did things that I would never do now. I was incredibly adventurous. But compared to 50, I saw that I was actually a very fearful person. So being bolder, not caring about what people think about you is probably the most important lesson I carried away from 50. That kind of boldness, that kind of sense of a mission in life where nobody's going to stop you, where I have an ambition and it's get rich or die trying, as he said, you know, had an incredible impact on me as well. Thankfully, 50 and Robert Greene are still maintaining this kind of warm relationship, and recently Greene mentioned 50 in one of his online interviews in a positive light, to which 50 responded in a very friendly manner with a repost and a caption hyping up his mentor. Quoting Greene and 50's book, The real poetry and beauty in life comes from an intense relationship with reality in all its aspects. Realism is in fact the ideal we must aspire to, the highest point of human rationality. Both men shared a similar mentality, and what they managed to create in the form of the 50th law was just that. Poetry. Make sure to subscribe for more.